Jeff, call 911. What is the address of the emergency? For West Metro Fire Rescue and the community we serve, 2021 was a year of working to get back to normal. After nearly two years of the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, our district is stronger and more resilient, and our firefighters and staff even more dedicated to serve. In 2021, we responded to nearly 40,000 calls, a new record for West Metro. From structure fires to wildland fires, vehicle crashes and medical emergencies, if you needed us, we were there. All right, hello, folk. And one way we responded was by rolling up our sleeves. A group of West Metro firefighters took part in the trials for the COVID-19 vaccine. Marking a milestone in the fight against COVID-19. All right. As a group of West Metro and Arvada firefighters bear their arms. All right, hello, folk. To receive the first of two doses of a vaccine designed to prevent the coronavirus infection. Okay, ready? One, two, three. At this immunization clinic, Jefferson County Health is using the Moderna vaccine, which, like the Pfizer version, was developed in just a few months and then tested on thousands of volunteers around the world. With the Moderna vaccine at 94% and the Pfizer at 95% effectiveness in preventing the virus. Both vaccines granted emergency use authorization by the Food and Drug Administration. In Colorado, a thousand volunteers participated in the Moderna vaccine trial, including these four West Metro firefighters, all members of the same crew at Station 2. Most of our crew was pretty excited about being able to participate in that study, mostly because we wanted to be able to help science and help a vaccine trial that could potentially fix the, the COVID problem that we have globally. Personally, I participated in the study because I, you know, I think that my concern was even though if I got COVID, I would, you know, my, most likely be fine. Um, but I would be worried that I would bring the virus home to my family, to my wife, uh, to my daughter, to my parents, to my wife's parents. Um, that was all really concerning to me. I was also concerned that in our role, you know, if I were asymptomatically infected or pre-symptomatically infected, I was worried that while we were going on calls to help people, that we could actually be the vector of transmission. So kind of our overarching mission of the, the fire service is to be able to help people, and I didn't want to be part of the problem in that sense, because we do have so much a direct interaction with the community. Because the studies were blind, with some volunteers receiving the vaccine and others a placebo, participants didn't know for sure if they got the real thing, although some had telltale signs. The first dose I had zero side effects, and the second dose I had some minor chills and body aches afterwards. For everyone, volunteering for the trial means a two-year commitment of regular checkups and blood draws. We committed to a a two-year trial with the idea that it's important for the, the scientists to also be able to understand how long the protection and the antibodies exist. The two-year time frame will uh, let us know how long we are protected from this virus. And if it turns out they didn't get the real vaccine, they'll be joining other first responders in rolling up their sleeves. If I get vaccinated, that means I can't get somebody else sick. And so if the opportunity were given if I were in the placebo group uh, and found out that I was but was eligible for the vaccine, I would absolutely do it again. Globally, we'll be able to protect everyone around us the more people get the vaccine. That's it. All righty. Caring for the community is our mission, and a unique way we provide service is with our Advanced Resource Medic, or ARM car. The ARM car debuted in 2018. And in 2021, we expanded service to 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The car and its staff have been invaluable with the ability to treat patients in place, potentially avoiding a trip to the emergency room and saving thousands in healthcare costs. By being able to offer 
quite a bit of time on scene to the patients, we're able to dig into a little more of their history, more of trying to figure out what pieces are missing that could have led to their immediate issue, but could also lead to issues down the road. So that could be, they might not have primary care or they haven't seen their endocrinologist for a long time and that's leading to the issues that they have now. And we're able to reach out to them on scene and get immediate feedback at times that we can implement with the patient and develop a plan for them down the road. So that's a nice, nice service to be able to offer. Yeah, I thought so, I just wanted to make sure. Medical emergencies make up the majority of our calls, and on every apparatus, that's every fire engine, ambulance, or truck, there's at least one paramedic on board, highly trained and ready to handle any situation, even delivering a baby on the family's front lawn. <laughs> oh, yeah. She may be small, but Wren Riley had a good deal to say about when and under what circumstances she would make her entrance into the world. Jeffcom 911, what's the address to the emergency? We got a call for her, I think it was came out as a woman in labor. Well, as I turn out my front door, I have another contraction and my water breaks. The time was around 2.30 a.m. on a Sunday in March and the place in the Riley family's front yard. Is she having contractions in her labor right now? Yes. We pulled up and everybody was out in front of the house and Maggie was in the front seat of her car. I get in the car, I have another contraction. And at this point I'm now going, there's no way. We are going to make it to the hospital. Not exactly what the family had planned, but Nature and Wren had a different idea. And I got out and brought our pram right up to the side where she was and asked what was going on. And she said, baby's coming. And I said, okay, well, let's get on our bed and we can get in where it's warm and, you know, see where, we're, where we stand. And so at this point, as we're having a conversation, I'm pulling my pants down because I can feel her crowning. And so Dennis kind of goes, okay, and so then he starts to help me, and he goes, oh my goodness, we are having a baby. And I was like, yes, we are. When we did our first check, she was crowning, um, so we uh, got her into the best position we could in the front seat of the car. He just got into position, ready to catch her, and he said, okay, one more push, and she's here. Baby was born about two minutes from the time West Metro Medic 13 and Engine 15 arrived on scene. She did obviously did all the work. It, it went fairly quickly. Um, our, our, my big concern is one of the, one of our main rules in EMS is don't drop the baby. And here I was with it was probably a good three to four feet to a cold concrete ground. So that's all my focus was is don't drop the baby. And we did okay there. I just kind of tossed her on to mom, and everything was lovely. It just happened. It happened so fast. Hi guys. Everybody was in the right place at the right time. In such a chaotic, crazy situation, they didn't miss a beat. You know, most of our career, we we're showing up into people's tragedies, times, times of their life when, you know, we're, we're there to help and it's rewarding to do so, but you don't get to see people at a good point in their life very often, to be quite frank. So to be involved in a call where nothing could be happier is, um, get you that yum yum good feeling, I guess, that, that we do get to see some happy things sometimes as well. She is fantastic. Uh, she was little when she was born. She was five pounds, six ounces. She's healthy. She got to meet Dennis and the guys, and it's, you know, it's gonna be a great story. I can't wait till she's old enough to understand um, what happened. I actually printed a photo that you had taken, and uh, I'm gonna put it up in her room. I just think it's a cool little thing that she'll have forever of Dennis, the paramedic, that delivered her in the front seat of her mother's car. At West Metro, dedication to public service starts in our Recruit Academy. And in 2021, we held two academies, graduating 53 new firefighters. During the academies, we partnered with Castle Rock Fire, Arvada Fire, Tri Lakes Monument Fire, and Upper Pine River Fire Protection District, training their recruits alongside ours. The class learns real life lessons from firefighters with a wide range of experience. What's cooking in this small kitchen is a recipe for potential disaster. A plastic container of grease left on a hot burner first melts and then bursts into flames, reaching up to the cabinets overhead. 
while next door in this basement, fire peeks out from beneath the pillows on the couch. And in this room, a malfunctioning electrical cord catches the love seat on fire. Okay, who's ready to go? Now West Metro recruits will take what they learned in the classroom to figure out where and how the fire started. Get that wide focus, look in. Wide focus, in, okay? You're up, about three minutes in there. They will base their investigation on the evidence left behind. Charred walls, still smoking furniture, melted toys, and melted light bulbs. Melting patterns, uh, whether it's just a simple pattern, a V pattern, or just a, a cone pattern, or whatever type of pattern it is, just normal combustible material that is ignited and burning. I was going to put a pattern on different items, all the way down from the carpet to the uh, sofas and the, the contents of the room itself. When these recruits graduate and become part of a crew. See what you see, communicate. They will find out firsthand that fire investigation begins the second they roll up to the scene. We're wanting to go wider, narrow our view down. So we kind of approach the structure, viewing it as a whole and then slowly narrowing it down, seeing where the smoke comes from, where everything's kind of condensed into one spot where the charring is most pinpoint, most black. You guys getting it together? Yeah, you think you're good? With this structure here, it was a basement structure, so I saw a couch that was completely charred, uh, the wall behind it kind of broken up above it. We kind of figured that since one part of the couch was completely destroyed, missing almost one entire cushion. We kind of figured it started there, plumed up, and spread up the wall a little bit, and then the smoke uh, was so superheated that it flowed through the, the ceiling and then ended up into the room above it where it ended up catching fire to a, uh, a bed frame and then melting some child's toy uh, for their dollhouse. You got it? I think so, sir. Okay. Wide and narrow, wide and narrow. Yeah. What I mean by going from wide to narrow is what they observe when they first get on scene and then going narrower to find point that room of origin or the area of origin. This training will help them recognize what's important, how to read the clues and pass along the details. That it was like really melted and then it looked like the heat kind of came up from there and moved outwards. We could see like how it spread, how it started to decay in towards certain areas and how it was extinguished. I want them to know, I want them to feel where was that heat when you first went into that building or structure? Was it on your left side of your body? Was it on your right side of your body? It kind of gives me a little bit of direction. How much water did you have to use? All those things just that help me establish my thought process from going wide to narrow as well, where to focus my energy. Narrow it, narrow it. Wide to narrow. You guys got it. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Even after the academy is over, training continues. Every one of our firefighters spends hundreds of hours a year working on skills and techniques. And in 2021, that preparation was tested very early on. On Super Bowl Sunday in February, a fast moving grass fire along Morrison Road. The Bear Creek Fire was driven by extremely strong winds that pushed the flames toward nearby neighborhoods. A quick response with assistance from surrounding fire districts helped our crews outflank the fire. It was a real reminder that in Colorado, there really is no fire season and that potentially dangerous wildfires can happen any time of the year in any neighborhood. It's why we have to be ready. Homeowners reporting a fire coming off the mountain behind their house. They're worried about the winds pushing it around. Today we're doing wildland urban interface training. West Metro's district is unique where eight of our fire stations are within our urban interface area and the threat of wildfire is continuously on our minds and especially as we have increasing drought conditions and uh, drought creeps back into our county um, and we've seen increased fires and we just want to make sure our crews are out there looking at homes and properties and access points and just being prepared for wildland fires. Brush six, Bravo. We're ready for water. Copy. Part of our 
So what we mean by wildland urban interface is wildland is the forests, the open space areas, and the, the urban corridor as that butts up into those regions. And we have homes throughout all of these areas. So as those two mix together, we have unique challenges, power lines, narrow roadways. As we get out and see these areas and we kind of practice and, and train for that fire moving through those areas, it just gets the crews really familiar with what it's like in a uh, non-threatening environment and kind of role play as to what it would be like as a actual fire moves through the area. Looks like the wind is coming from the east blowing to the west of the hill at this time. The value of training in, in the environment here, in the, in the homes, in the neighborhoods, it allows the crews to see what's actually going on, what kind of challenges do exist when there would be a fire. All of West Metro's firefighters are wildland firefighters. Oh. We need all of our firefighters to have the knowledge to respond in any capacity, jump off the truck, and know how to fit in and fight fire. West Metro is an all-hazard fire agency. Not only do we fight fires and answer medical calls, we also respond to rope rescues, water rescues, and hazardous material spills. We have several special teams recognized for their ability to handle difficult situations. In March, our technical rescue team assisted Golden Fire with a climber who had fallen about 40 feet on a steep slope in Clear Creek Canyon. Rescuers hiked up to the patient, stabilized him, and then built a rope system to lower him down. Once they got to Clear Creek, they used a boat to move him across the frozen water. The climber was transported to a local hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. In July, our dive team was tasked with helping remove this vehicle from a swimming pool in Lakewood. A teenage driver with mom as a passenger had accidentally rolled right in. Neither was injured and they were able to get out on their own. The car was hooked up to a chain and the tow truck driver did the rest. That was one of our more unusual calls and a great example that you never really know exactly what's waiting until you get to the scene. Because of that, firefighting can be a stressful profession. Our crews are almost always working in emergency situations. To help with processing the tough calls, we added some new family members here at West Metro. Certified therapy dogs, on call for any crew that might need a pick-me-up. When the crew at West Metro Station 3 returns from a call, <laughs> there's a furry, four-legged greeting waiting at the door. This is Remy. She's a three-year-old Irish setter. Remy is one of West Metro's therapy dogs, and she lives at the station when her owner is on duty. So she's our family dog. I've also trained her to be a bird dog, so she can hunt pheasant and other game birds with me in the fall. Uh, and her disposition has just kind of led her down this path to becoming a therapy dog as well. Hey, Remy's ability to adapt to her surroundings serves her well here because the crew is constantly on the move and she often spends time by herself. Waiting for them to get back and there's been a bit of a learning curve. She might have gotten into about a pound and a half of elk that was sitting on the counter one day. So now when we go on calls, I try to put her in the office if we've got food out. But she's trying. I mean, she's only a dog, you know? What can you expect? <laughs> Hello, little buddy. Don't you look official? This is Captain. He's a two-year-old golden doodle. He is the first of West Metro Fire's therapy dogs. At West Metro Station 1, Captain has earned his place with the crew on A shift. He's like a family member. They all know his, his quirks, his ins and outs, his tricks. He gets in the recliners at night, which he doesn't do at home, thankfully. But yeah, he does family time. His bed's right in the day room with everybody else. He sits at the table for meals. He gets in the ambulance for rig checks. He waits at the top of the stairs when I'm gone on calls. And he's just, he's part of the family. Everyone kind of likes having him around. 
around and if I ever don't bring him for any reason, they immediately want to know where's Captain. So it's never where's Tori or uh, what's going on with you. It's where's Captain and oh hi Tori. So he's definitely the more popular family member, I think. Tori is Captain's owner. He was the first West Metro therapy dog in a program that she initiated based on experiences away from the fire station. My family has a nonprofit. They do animal rescue, rehabilitation, and a lot of therapy um, with horses, farm animals, some dogs. And I've seen firsthand the value in just being around animals, being around dogs. Firefighters at Station 1 respond to a wide range of emergencies. The station is the busiest in West Metro's district, located just a block south of Colfax. And Captain has been a calming influence on what's normally a very hectic workplace. With the volume of calls and the acuity of calls that we run, it's really nice having him around. Um, we've run some difficult pediatric calls that kind of hit home with some of our crew members, just being that the children we are running on are the same age, same gender as their own children, and that could really affect them. And having him around really just kind of diffuses and decompresses the situation. So him just being at Station 1 has been very helpful. It doesn't matter. Everything can take a tax on your mental health and well-being but I've noticed it a lot with calls that have affected different crew members directly. Uh, pediatrics is obviously something that's very difficult. He's just, whether you realize it or not, or you think you need him or not, it's good to have him around and it makes a difference. Can't get enough pet petting, can you? The ultimate goal of the program is to have three therapy dogs working on every shift so that they can cover all 17 stations in West Metro's district, responding to help crews process through difficult calls. There is no breed restriction, but every dog has to be trained and certified to make sure they can handle a high energy and often stressful environment. Well, there we go. I don't know the science behind it. I wish I could see in her mind and what she knows or what she smells or what she senses, but there's no doubt. Like a dog recognizes when you're struggling and they'll sit down and struggle with you. They know when you're happy and they wag their tail and they're happy with you. They just have a, a sense, I think, of people and what they're going through and they're just really good at, at responding to that. The therapy dog program is just a small part of taking care of our people so they can take care of our district. Our firefighters and staff are what makes us who we are. And our commitment to serve means doing what we can to improve the way of life in the communities we serve. In 2021, West Metro was recognized for that commitment with the J. Evan Goulding District of the Year Award from the Colorado Special Districts Association. It was extremely gratifying and an honor to receive the award. But we know that as our district continues to grow and our call volume continues to rise, West Metro will face even more challenges. We must be constantly looking for how we can do better. It's all part of whatever it takes to serve. Jeff, call 911. What is the address of the emergency? 